In this video, we are going to be eating food directly from the farm in just Plato State. Oh, Mamiya. This part of Nigeria has one of the most fertile land masses in the world. We are also going to be meeting up with a woman who has found business success from farming in Nigeria. Everywhere I go, I have strawberry everywhere. Well, there's no strawberry rice. <laughs> Please like and subscribe to this channel as the goal this month is to get to 200,000 subscribers. Hello guys, what's up? How are you doing today? I know this is my first video this year. Happy New Year! And I'm sure you guys are wondering where I am and what I have in my hands. These are strawberries. Strawberries all grown in Nigeria. And I'm currently in Joss, in a place called Vom. They have a lot of fertile lands here where they grow a lot of stuff. And today we're going to be meeting up with an incredible person. And then she's going to be explaining to us and sharing her story with us about how she started this strawberry business. Let's go and talk to her. My goal with this video is to show you that there's a lot of potential in Nigeria. Nigeria and in Africa in general there are so many business ideas to actually try out and here we have the wonderful person I was telling you about hi what's up say hi to my <laughs> introduce yourself to my viewers my name is Ashley and I'm the CEO of Ashley Strawberry Farm let's check this out strawberries in Nigeria mmm fresh from the farm see how this is so also what's your story why, why strawberries first of all strawberries Literally, everyone keeps asking me that question. Mm. I love the fruit. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, like me and strawberries, everywhere I go, I have strawberry everything. Strawberry daiquiris, strawberry, you know, I have strawberry in my, in my cereal. Strawberry cake. Strawberry cake, strawberry cheesecake. But there's no strawberry rice. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> strawberry rice. <laughs> At least not yet. Okay. I don't think I want strawberry rice. Sorry, rice. rice. <laughs> I might want a little bit of strawberries. Okay. I'm from Joss. Okay. From Plateau State. Okay. And Plateau is known for, or is meant to be the home of peace and tourism. I'm sure you guys know that pretty much everybody is affiliated to Joss in one way or the other. Yeah, true. From musicians to true. politicians Emma, yeah. Yeah. to Many of them, actresses, of them. everyone was here at some point. And there's a reason. Hmm. So I was like, what can we actually do to bring, just to bring awareness to our place? Because, you know, we need to revive Joss to what it was. Just take it back to the Joss that everybody loved and enjoyed coming. So I knew about strawberries. Actually, strawberries have been going on in Joss for a very long time. This area that we're in yeah. is called Chaha. We're in Chaha community now. And the locals here, the people, are known for strawberry farming. As you can see, they're all around. Yeah, there are a lot of people. It, we drive out, literally all the houses that you see, the little huts, yeah. they're all farmers. So this is wow, this pretty is much what they're known for. For? I don't think they knew the value of, of what, of what of they what, were. Of what they had. They had, yeah. I mean, to them, it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, something can grow on our land. Why don't we just do it? And then they were doing it, and people were buying, you know, in small quantities. And then all of a sudden, there's this boom, like, everybody wants strawberries. There's this high demand of, we want strawberries. People calling, oh, I want 50 kilos, I want 100 kilos, I want 200 kilos every yeah. week. And to the locals, they're like, uh-uh. What's going What's on? Going on? <laughs> you know, if everybody wants this, you this know, thing, must be, it must be valuable. Must be, exactly. From what I can see, it seems like you probably get it way cheaper here because this is where it's planted from than somewhere like Lagos or somewhere outside Nigeria. I mean, we have strawberries. I'm sure you all know the strawberries that they sell in ShopRite and in other supermarkets. The quantity and the quality cannot. This I'm saying. If they doubt me, we can find a way to. Sell I can't it. doubt you. How would they try. doubt you? Have they exactly. planted strawberries before? <laughs> they are talking is, to, the, <laughs> to the main person planting it. You cannot compare what you would get. Yeah. Like I can say, you can get something like this in ShopRite for maybe 2k. Yeah. This is not even up to 1,000 here because this is not even up to a kilo. Kilo. Wow. I've not seen strawberries that are this big. Like guys, look at it. Yeah. The, the, the normal ones you probably see in other places are usually this size. Exactly, and you find like well, look 10. At, look at the difference. You find like 10 in a pack for like 2,000. And this is not even the biggest. Yeah, we wow. have so many big ones in there. No, I think I like this big one. Oh yeah, now go for it. So you said I should take it you then. You bend. You bend it like this. Snap. Ooh, <laughs> my first strawberry. My first. <laughs> <laughs> what did you study in school? So Was I it agriculture? No. <laughs> so you didn't study agriculture? What did you study in school? <laughs> So first degree was international relations. Okay. And then and now you are relating with strawberries. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I moved on to global ethics and human values. Oh. Hmm. So it's pretty much philosophy. Wow. These days, many people are saying they want to leave Nigeria and go to Canada or leave Nigeria and go to 
London, UK, US. They feel there's nothing here that they can do and actually make a living from. So why did you that was there, you school there, you could have easily gotten a job there. Why did you decide to come all the way back from there and come back to Nigeria to come and farm? Because it's home. I don't think there's any, you know, any other reason, but it's home. You know, and the truth is life at home and life abroad is not the same. We can all attest to that, like, especially if you're coming from a proper Nigerian family and culture, there is no way that you would enjoy living, you know, in London, for instance, where you're alone. True. You know, it's, it's a very lonely life. Here, you can see the farmers, everybody's relating to each other. We're a family. It's a community. And it's the same thing, like, um, in our day-to-day -day activities and in things that happen in our lives. Like, for instance, when we give birth and... You know when there's a burial or something people gather around you so that is that is that feeling of i'm part of something you can't find that abroad no matter how many aunties and yes you might have family there but it's still not the same it's not the same home is home it's not easy being back home and i've had my struggles with strawberries as, <laughs> okay yeah, I've, had, I've had my struggles but at the end of the day is we keep trying you know we try today it doesn't work we try again imagine in nigeria where those best all over the world, best Nigerians in their various fields all come back home. Come on. Why would we be going anywhere else? True. Why would we really want to leave? We have good weather. We have, we have everything. Why would we want to leave? I understand the struggles. Do you understand? But then again, we can't all go. That's just the truth. I don't want to go. I enjoy going for holiday. Oh, please, home is home. home, is home. <laughs> so I think this is the one he should actually show. Ooh, this is, this is red and juicy. Eating strawberries. So here you go. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> now my first time. <laughs> okay, so try it. So guys, I'm about to show. Between this and this. Can you see how red this one is? I don't think I've seen a strawberry that is even this big and massive like this. This is my first time I've seen something this big. So let me try. Let me try. Let me try the Nigerian strawberry. <laughs> let me try the Nigerian strawberry for the first time. Mmm. Oh, Mamiya. Guys, check out the inside. See how red it is. And see how juicy. This is fresh, fresh from the farm. Why farming, generally? Um, and I don't know if you've gotten that question a lot. Like, why? Yeah, for me, I think it's the passion. I'm passionate about strawberries. And obviously, it means farming the strawberries. It's not just. And probably feeding people. And feeding, of course. But apart from that, is creating awareness you know people need to know that we are blessed as a country nigeria is blessed in so many ways and if this is my own trust me i've gone to bed and i've cried so many times and say god what is this what is it? all the things it's you could make me passionate about what kind of stress is this because <laughs> these people these things have made me cry on several occasions are you serious? i can't even lie to you but then the common nigerian man like you said, from Lagos. Yeah. And like, you guys are not aware that we grow this. Yeah, and most people are not aware that they grow this. Apart from people in Joss, because now, you know, you can see the hawkers selling them on the street and all of that. People don't even know what strawberries are. And it's, <laughs> abroad is like a luxury. Yeah, it is you actually. Have strawberries. You see them in champagne. Champagne, yeah. Chocolate, chocolate yeah, that. true. And if you're making a fuss about it and you call me and you're like, oh, strawberries, strawberries, they're looking at you like, what's this one? <laughs> That's my backyard. Your backyard. You know, so it's just creating awareness. So I'm just showing people that look, we have so many things we can actually do. There's potential for investment, there's potential for different things. You know, you just have to find something you're good at or something you love. I won't even say something you're good at because the truth is, something sometimes you're not good at something, but you become um, yeah, good true. at it. True. Like, you know, By constant, just constant, like consistency. That's what just like me when I started making videos, I wasn't good at it, but eventually, mm -hmm. like I eventually you got get, good you at it. You get better every single time. And another thing is, I'm sure you guys have seen, like around the farm, we have like cabbage. So many things grow here. Beans. <laughs> it's so many things. Lettuce. There's kale. I saw carrot too. Carrots. Then, we have carrots. 
grapes um, is it grapes too no grapes not on this farm but yeah we have grapes as well in and then you said coffee coffee beans coffee somewhere beans here on the other side yeah so so um, many things so many like things here. and then i also saw rose too you had rose in we your compound the rose was growing like it was just like a random weed but just growing <laughs> rose rose that if you want to buy in lagos or somewhere you buy it for like 2500 it was just growing randomly give us a call we, will we should give you a call <laughs> you said that you we'll plug us up <laughs> much of a big deal here and that's just the thing again it's like taking advantage of what we have yeah guys so here this is how they irrigate all their strawberries like they just have a dam somewhere and then they dug this whole place so all the water passes here and it leads to different people's strawberry farms can you imagine how innovative that is yeah just check it out well man what i cold as my hands <laughs> my hands are literally shaking now but we'll see how clear it is actually it's very very clear I can see a lot of people with pumping machines, pumping yeah. water. This is where? This is where the main source of water for most of the farms around here. Wow, wow, wow. So if you look here, you can see the pipes here. Look there. Yeah, you pipes. Look at the other end. Yeah, 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 I can see a lot of there pipes there. Farms, because there are more farms on that farms side. Farms on that and side if you too. Go this way, there are more farms there. I know someone has a coffee farm. Coffee, coffee farm? Wow. Bean farm, obviously, before it's now coffee, but it's somewhere on the other side. So coffee grows here too. Yes. So, is this land just naturally fertile or did you guys do something to eat or... Do Why don't we have land like this in Lagos? <laughs> <laughs> guys, so check out this farm. See how much cabbage is here. This is cabbage, are we? It's called yes, cabbage. Yes. It's interesting. All locally grown. All locally grown. And they are huge. Can you see the size? Of yeah. Them? You know they're still growing. You're not done. Oh, you're not done like this yet? Nope. Wow. <laughs> you guys, you can see one of the... One of the awesome opportunities of investment here. If you want to come and farm here, see how many see how much stuff is going here the land is so fertile you should come and check out just give us some of the problems you face generally in this whole business just one one is fine <laughs> because i know there are plenty there are always plenty yeah. i would say logistics logistics okay truth is and the reality is i don't know how i'm going to get it done yeah, and true. i cannot have their strawberries from Joss to Lagos and take them by road. By road is not, it's not possible. Strawberries do not like heat. heat Strawberries yeah. do not like being cramped. So the journey alone from here to Lagos is what, 11, 12 hours? Yeah. By the time it gets to Lagos, we're not sure the condition though. Of the in. strawberry again. Wow. So yeah, we're still trying. That's why I said so it's so a working process. We're still trying to figure out. Abuja people are good. Kaduna, because those areas are They're close. closed. What's the perception of security here? Why are people always afraid of the north? When people talk about safety here, Joss is relatively safe. You know, obviously during festive periods, um, not excluding jobs, everywhere around the country is tense. Like now, maybe once in a while you hear, okay, they're fighting in, maybe they'll say in Bokos, or they're fighting here in Birkin, Ladi, and all those mm -hmm. places. That's not Joss. It's in Plateau, but it's not Joss. Joss is a city. People need to know. We're not in a village. We're not in a bush. Do you understand? You have, we have the city. And then we're talking about outskirts. Outskirts. So whenever it. like the news says fighting in Joss or something has happened. Yeah. No, they're not talking about just, and it's kind of really annoying, you know, when people keep saying, oh, just is not safe, just is not safe, just is safe. Just people are friendly people, we're, we're accommodating, we're welcoming. So generally, do you think Africa is the future? Or Africa is the now? Because when people say Africa is the future, what do you think generally about that phrase, Africa is the future? I think we are. I think we honestly just need to believe in ourselves and use what we have, you know, to to be that future. We don't need, to be honest, we don't need the West. Like we, people feel like we need the West, we need the, you know, we need America, we need Europe, and maybe we do for education. They're good in that, yes. But the thing is, when you go out, come back home, we have what it takes to be on yeah. that same level. We just need to put different things aside, religion, class, tribe. tribe. There's, there's nothing that's, like that, that we're that's, human that's beings. Problem. Yeah. That is the main thing, we're human beings. And that's it. Once we realize that, I'm telling you, like nobody can compete with us. Nothing, even China. Okay, maybe not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. How lucrative is this business, generally? It will pay off. The price that I've set, which is the price I started with, and I don't plan on changing. Yeah. You will notice that people start with 1,000, then move up to 2,000, move up to... I'm keeping with my two five because I feel like strawberries are valued. True. So they need to be put on at a higher. At a higher. Yeah, it's true. not just. It's not a mango. Yeah, so it's, it's not, not a like mango. An so, yeah. True. So for me, I feel like two five is very reasonable. 
you know, and I feel a lot of people actually do agree. It's not just, okay, I want to sell, I want to sell, so let me just sell at 1,000. No, it's about valuing what you have. What's your advice to a lot of young people out there, young Africans, who are thinking of starting something or starting a business? And probably, you know, a lot of people will be like, okay, maybe I don't have enough money, I don't have enough funds, I don't see any opportunity in Africa, I need to leave. What's your advice to them as somebody who is building a business in Africa? Um, I would say that there are opportunities everywhere, you just need to find them. And if you cannot find them, do research. You know, it doesn't take anything. And even if you do your research and you've seen what you want to do and you don't have, you know, the capital to start, start somewhere. Hmm. You know, start somewhere. And one thing, like for me, don't be afraid. Honestly, honestly, don't be afraid. So that's all I have for you today. If you like the video, please like button. We're trying to get to 200,000. 200,000 subscribers. Hopefully this month. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.